So in today's lecture, we've been looking at the inverse of a matrix. Now, in this last part of today's lecture, I want to link the idea of inverses with systems of linear equations, kind of the topic of the first week of class. So we have the following theorem that somehow links some of these ideas together, which says that if I have an n by n matrix and it's invertible, then the matrix equation Ax equals b actually has a unique solution. So normally we're looking for the numbers solutions, or if there is a solution, and when this matrix A is invertible, it has a unique solution for all b. So regardless of what the vector b is here, you can have a solution. And not only that, we actually have a formula to find that x. You take your vector b and you multiply it by the inverse of your matrix. Why is this true? Well, let's just kind of walk through what happens if we set x equal to a inverse b in this equation. If we let x equal to a inverse b, then what we have is a times a inverse times b. It's the same thing as, well, regrouping the parentheses. So we have a times a inverse times b. But a times a inverse collapses to the identity matrix. So the identity matrix times the vector b. And we haven't given this much uh, discussion, but whenever you take the identity matrix and you multiply it by a vector, you get back the original vector b itself. So yes, you do get a solution. So all that I've really shown here is that if A is invertible, then you, there is a solution. You could always cook this up. The one thing that I'm kind of glossing over, but what you can find in the textbook, is that this solution is unique. So if you didn't fully understand that, maybe this following example will help make some of these ideas a little bit clearer. Let's go back to kind of a typical problem way back from the beginning of chapter one. You have a system of linear equations that you want to solve. Now, the first approach that we have would be to use Gaussian elimination. We would take this system and we would put it into the augmented form. So 1, 2, 4, 7, 5, 18. There is my augmented form. And I'm going to row reduce this and I'm going to skip the steps. But again, you can pause if you want and try to fill in the details. I put it into row reduced echelon form. And this tells me that x1 is 1 and x2 is 2. Let's make this clear that this is the echelon form. Put some dotted lines there. Okay, so this is the old approach. What is about the new approach? Okay, well, notice that the coefficient matrix in this case is the matrix 1, 2, 4, 7, which we've seen a couple times. But more importantly, what we have is that the system of linear equations is equivalent to the matrix equation 1, 2, 4, 7 times the vector x equaling to the vector 5, 18. All right, so we have it in now the, the form Ax equals to B. And as I pointed out earlier, this matrix here actually appeared twice uh, in today's lecture. And we found its inverse in two different ways, but just let me recall what it is. So the inverse of this matrix we computed was negative 7, 2, 4, minus 1. So if I want to solve this equation, I can easily do this. So the solution to this equation, according to the theorem up at the top, so we have this matrix is invertible. I want to find the solution. Well, I take B and I multiply it by the inverse of A. So here is my inverse of A, minus 7, 2, 4, minus 1. And I'm going to multiply it by 5, 18. And when I do that, I get minus 35 plus 36, which is 1. And then I get 20 minus 18, which is 2. But notice I'm getting the exact same answer. Over here, I got x1 is 1 and x2 is 2. And that's exactly what I'm getting here. So let's maybe highlight this. Same answer. So one uses the Gaussian elimination, the other uses the inverse of a matrix. 
we can say a little bit more here and hopefully kind of give you kind of the big idea of what's happening here is when you have a system of linear equations, we talked about this a couple of times, that you can have three types of solutions. You can have those system of linear equations with zero solutions, those with one solution, and those with an infinite number of solutions. And the big idea that you want to kind of take away from today's lecture is that the number of solutions is related to the invertibility and hopefully I can spell this right. It's a problem when you don't have a spell checker built into your uh, tablet. Invertibility of the coefficient matrix. So that's kind of the big idea here. So let, let's make this a little bit more clear. We kind of have a bunch of concepts that are all now linked. We have a system of linear equations with n equations and n unknowns has exactly one solution. So this is a, a system of linear equations with n equations and n unknowns. Be because of that, the coefficient matrix is a square matrix. And based upon what we've seen before, this is equivalent to the fact that the coefficient matrix row reduces to the identity matrix. So it will have exactly one solution if this case happens here, the coefficient matrix reduces the identity. But now using kind of our new terminology, there's another way of thinking about this. And this new way of thinking about this is that the coefficient matrix is invertible. And that's a, another way of kind of explaining what's happening over here in this theorem, if that you have an invertible matrix, then it only has one solution, okay? And that only happens if your matrix is invertible. So kind of one of the takeaway here is that we're introducing invertibility and why are we interested in invertibility because of this kind of kind of relationship between all of these different topics and namely it's telling us when we have exactly one sort one solution to our system of linear equations so there's a, kind of a lot of nice useful information packed into today's lecture now some of the key points you might want to take away is the definition of the inverse of a matrix and the procedure to find the inverse of a matrix. So that's it for today and I'll see you on lecture 13.